Hello, friends, and welcome to the Mama and the Mance podcast. I am Christy, and I'm your host today. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Gmail as Mama and a Mance. Uh, we have a Rav group set up as well. You can go there and introduce yourself in the thread set up for that. We have a giveaway going on that we are very close to happening. Uh, for 50 subscribers, we're giving away this awesome United States themed bag with lots of monuments. It has this adorable little zipper pull, which also could be used as a progress keeper. I don't even, it doesn't seem like that's focusing very well. This is from Knits Best Thing on Etsy. And it also comes with a matching needle holder. And this is Dawn from Codependent Knitters. She's the owner and maker of that shop. I have several of her bags and she offered this as a giveaway. So we're using that for the 50 subscriber giveaway. And uh, all you need to do to enter that is make sure you're subscribed and then introduce yourself in the introduction thread on the Ravelry group. And I will be pulling randomly for that once we hit 50. You can also go in there and share your 2018 yarny or fiber related um, goals. And there, that's where the show notes will be um, for each podcast. You can also ask any questions that you have of me, uh, whether it's personal questions, things that you would like to see on the podcast, suggestions for topics, anything like that. And all of that can be found in the Mama and a Man's Ravelry group. <clears throat> And it's been a little while since I podcasted. I'm a little bit rusty and looking at my notes quite a bit. I think that I'm going to try to pick a day that that's my podcast day. So what I'm thinking might work are Wednesdays during nap time. So in the future, not in two days, this is just Monday, but um, ne starting next week, I'm going to try Monday. And if that doesn't work, or Wednesday, then I might try Sunday afternoons, but those sometimes fill up with meetings and my husband does a service at the local nursing home. So there's lots of things to work out with that. So I'm hoping Wednesdays might work. And if I just have that planned day, then maybe I can get better at being consistent. I really meant to always have this coming out once a week. And we've just had so much going on that it just keeps getting pushed back. But I will talk more about that at the end during Life in the Manse. Or, yeah, Life in the Manse. And if you are not sure what Life in the Manse um, even means, a manse is a clergy's provided home in the Presbyterian Church. My husband is a pastor, and so we live in a manse. And um, we have five kids, one who just turned 10, um, one that's almost going to be eight, and then we'll be out of our birthday season, thankfully a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and an almost nine-month-old. So, anyways. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in um, to my finished objects. I made my um, show notes for myself a couple weeks ago and actually had to change tons of stuff because everything that I had in my whips ended up in my finished objects. So, I will start with the most long-standing lip whip that I've had that I've now finished I guess because there's others that are older that I decided not to finish but my dad shawl is completely done now I had cast this on while visiting my father for his last birthday four years ago and I decided that um, well if you haven't seen other podcasts I had started this pattern. He was very impressed with it. It is the Falling Leaves by Dory Brown. And for some reason I picked this pattern, but I didn't have enough yarn for it. So I got this yarn to just put like a color co color block section into it. And I did all that. The last time I showed it, I was to the end of the color block. And, um, and as a I guess celebration of his birthday this year I decided I was going to finish it and so I did the whole other section in four days um, between like Friday and his birthday this year would have been on a Monday 
So I finished that up in record time. Part of it was because the lace was actually kind of similar to some of the other lace. All three of the shawls that I'm going to show you today had something that was relatively similar to one of the other shawls. And I think that that helped me just go through it a lot faster, but I really cranked this one out and had it blocked and everything by my goal of finishing it for what would have been his 61st birthday. So that is off the needles and I'm very happy with it. This is quite squishy and lovely on my neck. I have no itching issues. It is Madeline Tosh. It's my first ever Madeline Tosh. But it has some speckles of orange, which was his favorite color, but also has the blue, black, and pink that I would be more likely to wear. And so that's why I picked that for the color blocking. The next thing that I finished was my sister shawl, which was a mystery knit along from Cozy Up with the Stitch and Sisters. It was not egg shaped. It did end up being a trapezoid. And the interesting construction bit was that it started here in the middle and went all the way to one end, and then you came back to the middle and went all the way to the other end. I did have a couple of issues with this uh, shawl, not because of the pattern riders, but first my three-year-old decided that scissors would be cool to use on it. And so I had to rip out a section see if I can tell which one side it is. It's this side. Yeah. So he had cut a big hole in this area. So I took it out to here, knit it back up, and then ended up just kind of like grafting it back onto this because I didn't want to redo the lace. And then as I was blocking it, I noticed that there was a giant hole that hadn't been there before. Where did my other spot go? Guess maybe it's this side. Oh no, it's further down. It's the other eyelid section. And you can see here that I have like this random eyelet right here. Um, and that was from my repair. The whole it was pretty big and I'd had one stitch ladder down, but it was just the one string you can see. I've got a little bit sticking out right here. It was just one string that had come apart. And this, I didn't remember there being any knots in it or like bad spots in the yarn. And so I kind of feel like this was not scissors because then it would have been a lot of strings. And I am tentatively blaming it on our kittens. They really like to knead on, wow, the shadows are really bad today. They really like to knead on blankets and they suckle on them. And so they are always like on the fuzzy blankets. They'll ha like have this little spot of all the fuzzes all bunched up from them suckling on it. And I feel like they might've done that on my shawl and just happened to break one string. That's the only thing that I can really think of. But besides that, I really enjoyed this pattern. Let me see if I can get most of it in here. There you go. And I can wear this to where like the gray mostly shows and the purple's mostly on my back. <sighs> um, or I can, you know, use it where the purple's there. So I kind of, oh, I'm showing you the wrong side. So I can kind of like tailor this to whatever outfit I happen to be wearing. But I do enjoy this. I don't know the I-cord edging, the Jamie shawl that I did recently, and then this is the first time I've ever done this I-cord edging on a shawl. And I don't know if I'm pulling on it too tight because it doesn't seem like I feel like there's more stretch that I could have got while blocking it, but the edge was taut. I mean, you can see that's tight, but this I could stretch more. And so I don't know if that is the way I-cord edging just is, or if I need to not be pulling so tight. I normally, when I make I-cord, yank it pretty tight. And I try not to do that, but there is still kind of like that 
wanting to pull it so you don't have the laddering of the bag. But this was out of Midnight Cravings. The um, Sarah, they had a kit for each sister, and uh, I chose the Sarah one, which had the purple. So there's Dingle Dop, Wrought Iron, and Raisin the Bar. Pretty sure. But that is all finished up now. <clears throat> okay, so then. I had mentioned that I was wanting to do some um, slouchy yoga socks and I had gotten a kit long long ago from Craftsy that was the Lion Brand Amazing Yarn and that's the yarn that it came with and then the pattern was the Amazing Sausalito Stirrup Socks and I went to start this uh, for the rainbow along for Suburban Stitcher, which I am like cranking out rainbows like no other for and the pattern was absolute crap and I hated it and was like I am not knitting this the way that you said it is completely stupid and So I completely just wrote my own pattern for it um, I still have stitch markers on the one side so I can count decreases and all that and they look kind of ridiculous just holding them like this because they are just big tubes that get big, get bigger up there. And then I did decrease them out a little bit so they'll stay up above my calves, but I'm not going to put them on because it's February in Nebraska and I haven't had a pedicure since August, so you don't want to see that. They have the heel cut out, they'll be slouchy, and I will take finished object pictures of those whenever I get a chance. I did like this yarn for what it was for. I mean, it's kind of itchy a little bit, but I liked the fuzziness of it and just kind of the weird color changes. I mean, they're completely kind of random. The socks are not even similar. You can tell they go together, but like this one, this top one has a lot more pink, like has a lot of bright pink. And there's just this tiny bit of orange in this one, whereas there's a lot of orange in this one. They are the same colorway, same dye lot, everything like that. Uh, I did want to make a couple more sizes of these, and so I'm going to work on that. <clears throat> but I couldn't find any more of this yarn. And it doesn't seem like they make the amazing yarn anymore. The closest thing I found um, was the Lion Brand Landscapes that was kind of fuzzy. This is 53% um, wool and the rest acrylic. And the Landscapes yarn that they have now, which is the only thing I could find that was even sort of similar to this from Lion Brand, is completely acrylic. I don't want that for yoga socks. I do want the warmth of the wool and less of the acrylic sweatiness. So I will show you in my yarn porn section what I got uh, to make some more of these instead. All right. Um, oh, I totally forgot to get my sock lockers. That was dumb of me. Oh well. <clears throat> So I am participating in the Knitting Expat, uh, both the Wanderlust and the Cozy Sock Club. Yeah, Cozy Sock Collections for this year. It's her 2018 sock clubs. And the February socks were from the Cozy Collection. And these are the Warm and Cozy Socks. I finished those. When it came out that, um, that this would be good for a striping I immediately got out my rainbow yarns to make them uh, I think you can see there's these stripes are made into ridges but they are not there's no ridging on the bottom I did a fish lips kiss heel for this and 
it was kind of fun to see how these came out. They were not that one row where you make this ridge was not a quick knit. It was kind of a pain. Totally cute and worth it, but it's not something I wanted to do for like boot socks, which I did before. Though truthfully, I don't know, because my stripes were a little bit wider than what Mina had for her yarn, they stick out a little bit more. I don't know if holding this sideways, you can kind of see how they go. Um, and you don't do them on the very edge, which is why there's kind of that blip there. <clears throat> Uh, I don't know that wearing these in a pair of tight boots would be very comfortable, but wearing them in short shoes of some sort or a looser boot would be fine. Uh, I started out, <clears throat> this is the Turtle Pearl Own Colorway that my husband got for me. And it is the glitter and stripes because everybody needs uh, glitter. That looks backwards on the thing, but podcasters say that all the time and then it's right, so. It is 84 uh, Superwash Merino 16 Sparkly Nylon. And it came with the mint, the green mini for it. When I first started out, I was, I, you know, did this top cuff in the green and then I had the orange and the red and the orange and the yellow and then the green again. So when the sock was just this, I felt like I was like knitting a hot dog because it was like you had your relish and your ketchup and your mustard and then the orange was it all mixed and I was like, this is going to be so ugly. I do like this yarn, but I probably would not, oh, I have this little blip of yellow because my skeins weren't perfectly lined up and I think it's so cute that there's just that little, a little tiny bit of yellow. Oh well. Um, mm, I forgot what I was talking about. Okay, so this yarn reflects. It has the seven stripes, which Mina said an um, uneven number of stripes would be best because then when you get to that color again, it would be first flat and then in this uh, bump, in this ridge. But because this colorway reflects, see it goes to the red, and then it goes to the purple, and then it goes to the red, you know, it goes, it starts over again, which is why there's this big blob of orange in both places. Had I realized that, I would have taken that orange out, but, and then it does it again around the purple. Because it does that and it's reflected, that meant that all the yellow, all the red stripes yellow stripes, blue, and purple were all going to be in the ridges instead of it alternating. So I probably wouldn't use this again had I realized that. But I mean, I love them, so, and I don't really care. I just think it would be fun if my purple showed more because purple is my favorite. And the same with this blue. This is close close to one of my favorite kinds of blue as well and so I would have liked it to be more prominent like it is down here but at the top it ends up in the ridges and so it's just the small bits and it seems like the orange is just everywhere but I like these and I've been waiting to wear them until I could show them on the podcast so I'm excited that I finally did I did do the uh, 56 stitches on this I need to remember that when I am doing a pair of socks, if it doesn't have purl stitches in it, that I should probably go up to the next size, which I think for me this patterns is just 60. When they have purl, uh, purl stitches in them, my purls are loose enough that 56 is a good fit for it to stay conformed to my foot and not be like slouching off. But when it's all knit stitches, this did not pull it in or make it tighter or anything like that. It just scrunched down the, um, it took a, it took a stripe from like this to, you know, scrunching it down, making it stick out. It didn't constrict it sideways. Uh, but because it's all knit stitches, it is kind of snug, which they stretch out over time. That's fine. 
but that's just something I need to kind of remember because I have a tendency to forget that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see what else I have in here in my big bag of tricks. Okay, the next thing that I picked up um, on doing was a test knit for Laura Nelkin. And I was super excited to be chose for the, chosen for this. First of all, because I thought that the sweater was absolutely adorable and because, um, I have a baby. So it is the Baby Novice sweater. If you watch the Knit Girls, Lala or Laura is also test knitting this. Let me see if I can find the front picture. So it's this little like fold over wrap type jacket and it has the interesting construction um, with a back panel and it has these little side panels, the ties on the side, I just thought it was adorable. But I was also extremely excited to be chosen as a test knitter for Laura Nelkin. Uh, she's one of the first people that I bought a craftsy class from, you know, way back when. And so I've kind of followed her work for many, many years. And so, and I just think it's, I love test knitting. It's so much fun to be in on the ground floor and it just being somebody really famous that I've known about for a really long time was even more exciting. But I finished my test knit. It's in the 9 to 12 month. If you follow me on Instagram, then you would have seen lots of adorable little pictures of my daughter Violet in it. It is big on her right now, uh, but that is not a problem with the pattern. Um, she will be nine months next week. This is a 9 to 12, and she is a tall baby, but very, very small. Like, skinny like she is 90th percentile in height and 15th in weight so she's like a supermodel baby and so these sleeves were just you know giant on her they were long but they were also just really big so her little hands were kind of lost in there but here is the little back panel this was the most interesting knit ever it challenged me I would call myself an advanced knitter these sleeves are also put together with one of those panels, the sleeve and all the way down the side. It was amazing how this came together. You're knitting the sleeve and these little pieces on the side and the back. And then you go and you do the other side, the other sleeve and front and the little strip on the back. And then you go up the back and make this center panel and then you're like connecting them with the side panels. It was positively witchcraft. I could not picture how this was possibly going to turn into a sweater. My husband was often looking at it and saying, what are you doing? It's amazing. I absolutely love this cute little sweater. And I want one for myself. Maybe with it coming down a little bit more in the front. Like, I don't need that, like, upward showing of the, what would probably be the bottom of my mommy belly, but this was a fantastic one to participate in. And I really enjoyed doing that. Um, I feel like there was some, oh, that was out of Mad Hatter. Let me see. Wonderland Yarns Mad Hatter, which is a sport weight yarn. I did it in tea tree. I'm sorry. I thought that doing this during the day would mean that I would have better light, but I ended up having to put the lamp there, and now I'm getting these weird shadows. But when I didn't have it on there, I had these huge bags under my eyes, and I had like four chins. Like the daylight was horrible. It's like I was a vampire. I was making me like look even scarier than I normally do. Like I don't need that. Okay, so then I guess the next thing that I have to show is two Sundays ago I cast this on cast on this shawl because I wanted to have a whip to show on the podcast and I was gonna podcast later that day. 
and that did not happen. Uh, first of all, partially because I became obsessed with knitting this. It is the Mega Row Shawl by Jennifer Lasson. Sorry, this is in black and white, so I don't know how well you can see it anyways, but you can see it in lots of Technicolor right here. This shawl is massive, um, but I it has short rows in it, and then these lace. And so I, after debating very much about which mini set to use and which neutral to use, I finally decided on the Midnight Cravings Bite Size Mini Set Over the Rainbow, which includes from top to bottom, Pink Mimosa, Bellini Fizz, Daffodil, Green Apple, Droplet, and Violet. And then I ended up using um, One Twisted Tree Chaotic Neutral. And that is from Prairie Girl Danny of the Prairie Girls Knit and Spin. And that's the gray. <clears throat> I got so into this, I kept wanting to just get a little bit further or get to the next color or finish the next short row section. I did make some modifications, some because I had to and some because I just wanted to. The pattern calls for wrap and turns. I am really, really bad at wrap and turns. I... <sighs> probably could see them better now because I'm a much more experienced knitter than when the first time I tried to do them, but I don't like them. And I don't like to have to watch. I, especially on something like this, very much get into watching TV or watching and making sure there's a baby not eating an M&M or a dime or something. And so I didn't want to have to look for it. On top of which, the chaotic neutral is a very tonal gray. And I felt like wraps would disappear into that and you're supposed to, um, you don't have to pick them up, but you need to count so many after them. And I decided I couldn't handle that. So I did do German short rows instead. That worked out perfectly because even when I wasn't looking, I could feel the twins excuse me, the twin stitch on my needle when I would come to it. And so I didn't really have to pay attention. I would just feel it coming through and then know, okay, look at your work and then count. This was the first time that I did a pattern. I'm just going to cover this up that had the little check boxes. And I really enjoyed that in the very beginning. It did not help a lot because I would, you know, whip through a line and whip through another line without really thinking, okay, stop and make your check mark. And so then there were a couple times I had to go back and count and do math and see which line I was on because I had completely uh, spaced it off. But by the time, truthfully, I got to the first lace section, which was the pink, they were totally a lifesaver and I knew exactly where I was. And when it got to the very end, it did not seem like it was taking... A long time or was very intense until I can't the blue might have been feeling a little bit like it was taking a long time but then the, this this gray section and then the purple and then the next gray section this gray section about killed me that was the only time that it was like oh my gosh this shawl is taking forever the rest of it whipped out like crazy and I am absolutely in love with this. When I got it off the needles, I stood up on our couch and I'm five foot nine, so I am not a short person. I stood on our couch, put my arms up as far above my head as I could reach and held one end of the shawl and it was still touching the ground. It was so long and that was before blocking. Blocking it was pretty hard to do. It took a long time because it was curved and it needed a lot of space and yada, yada, yada. So there was that. Uh, the other thing is that I ended up having to change the amount of rows that I did on some of the color sections. I did not check gauge. I did go down a needle size because that's what I normally need to do. And I was happy with the fabric that I was getting. So it could be partially that. 
I'm not sure, but I ended up the skeins that I had in that mini set were um, they were heavy 20 gram skeins. Most of them, I think the smallest one was 22, and I think one of them might have even been like almost 27 or something like that. They were significantly more than just 20. And this is what I had left of the different colors. So the pink and the orange, I was good on, obviously. Um, then came, oh, the yellow, I had to cut two, don't drink my pot pineapple. Sorry, the kitty's trying to drink my drink. I had to take um, two repeats of the lace out. A, B, C. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out where it was. Yeah. Or no, the yellow I made it on. Yes. Yellow I made it through with this much left. And I was freaking out because I did not think I was going to make it. And then the green, I must have done all of it. That doesn't make sense. Why would I have been short of it? Okay, well, I can't remember now. Yeah, the green I cut, I had to cut two rows out of and only had that much left. And then the blue was already reduced by two rows and I had to reduce it two more and only had this little tiny bit left. And then I added in the purple which truthfully should not have caused very much yarn differences because I was, I had cut out like six rows by then anyways, but then I had to get into a different skein of the chaotic neutral that I had for a sweater. And so I used 24 grams out of that skein and I'm really hoping that it's not going to mess me up on my sweater. I think that fifth skein that I had was just for safety sake, but I did have to use 24 of that. And a lot of it was because of this huge short row section on the purple, which as you can see pretty well here. This short row section of the purple ate yarn like no other. But anyways, the whole point is I got super obsessed with this shawl and could not put it down. I finished it. I put it down for like three days because I was out of the chaotic neutral and I couldn't decide what to do. I hadn't decided whether I was going to get into my yarn supply or if I was going to go to the um, yarn store and try to get some, which on Sundays and Mondays is not a good, she's not open on Sundays and on Mondays she doesn't open until five, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, I just ate some out of my sweater yarn but I finished this in actually like seven days of knitting and it's ginormous. I'm very happy with that. I got tons of compliments. I wore it on Saturday to a meeting and it's so happy. Like I was kind of afraid that it would be too much. I mean it's a full-on rainbow but the rainbow part is muted I'm happy with the gray that I find. I had originally thought I was going to go with black and decided that might be a little too rock and roll with the rainbow colors. And so I am really happy with this. It's gorgeous. It's February. It's disgusting out. And so I'm really happy to have this and be able to wear it now. Okay. I believe that is all of my finished objects. I'll I don't even know how many of them. I'm going to take a short break so I can get a drink and tell my son not to be making noise while I'm podcasting. And then I'll be right back with you. All right. Now for whips. I decided to grab my Swirly Socks by Prairie Girls Susie of the Prairie Girls Knit and Spin and start working on those. 
actually they go this way. These are in Knit Picks Felici in the dark side color. And I had gotten to right here when I had my wrist surgery back in November. This lovely piece of beauty. It actually looks really faded on there. It's much more purple in person, especially when it's cold. But I finished my um, warm and cozy socks. And so I decided to finish these as they also go with the rainbow along theme that I'm going with. And I have this and the warm and cozy socks and the yoga socks. So these will be my fourth thing. I put the hills in them on Saturday and Sunday. I'm on a quest to try all the different heels. And so I tried the Eye of the Partridge on this. You know, I don't feel like I'm focusing very good today. I'm wondering if that's just me and my contacts are blurry or if it's really not focusing very well. But anyways, I obviously do not know how they fit or how much I will like them when I actually wear them. I do think that this little back section with the slip stitches and stuff is cute. I do kind of like that detail. I hated knitting this. Hated it. I really, really like that when a heel is done, it's done. When you're doing a German short row or fish lips kids heel, and truthfully, those are what I've used in most of my socks. <sighs> Knitting a heel flap then requires you to pick up stitches, and I'm not a fan of picking up stitches, first of all. This was easy to pick up the stitches because they were slipped, but also I somehow picked up a different number on each side and didn't realize it until I was almost all the way through the decreases. So one of them is not going to be the same size as the other. And then you have all this time that you are, um, this whole section right here is extra fabric that you're, you are decreasing out from knitting this heel flap. And I don't have any heel flap and gusset socks, so it may be that I really enjoy wearing them, but I do not like knitting them at all. <sighs> like They would have to be pretty amazing for me to want to do them again because it took forever. Granted, it was my first time doing it, so it is going to take longer than something that I've done and I can like just look at the pattern and then knit through it really fast. And when I get to a new section, maybe just look at the pattern and then knit the rest of the time without having to look again. I didn't have to keep looking at the pattern on this, but all those extra stitches took forever. And because I'm doing them two at a time on a Magic Loop Circular, I had a really hard time, like the cord doesn't want, the socks wanted to bow out instead of sliding back onto my needle. And so that was obnoxious and the picked up stitches were such an awkward angle. I ended up sticking DPNs in the sides and then picking them back up with my, um, with my circular when I would get to them. But anyways, I really love how the stitches swirl around. I'm not completely positive, um, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, when there are purl stitches, I should probably be making a smaller size. These are on 64 stitches, and I probably should have made the 56. I have very small feet for my height, and they're, like, skinny. <clears throat> and so I'm curious to how these are going to fit once they're finished. But lots of people have bigger feet than me if they don't. But I am enjoying this yarn. And as it turns out, it's kind of like opposite striping. So like these purple and gray, or purple and blues are across from each other. The yellows and the reds. Um, it's just kind of an interesting, different colorway than normal. But they're still a rainbow. I'm still enjoying them. I am about halfway down on the foot by the time my gusset went away. So... 
those should not be too much longer and will hopefully be a finished object for next week when I come back to show you stuff. Uh, I had started this before the Olympics and decided I needed something for the opening ceremonies that was going to be less, um, I didn't want to get into a short row or lace section with this during the open ceremonies. We had um, some people coming over and we were going to be watching TV, all five of our kids were going to be in the room. I just didn't want something very involved. And so I decided I had bought a long time ago yarn to make all of my kids fancy yarn hats. And so I had picked this spun pattern by Callie Berg. And I, it's not a great picture because I'm getting a shadow, but anyways, I started the, I did all the ribbing. I cast on before it started, before our guests got here. And then I did the ribbing during the opening ceremonies. And then I ended up not doing any more than the ribbing because of the twisted stitch that we were going to be doing, but also because there were two babies that were eight months and younger <laughs> that were pretty fussy that night. And so I couldn't really pay attention to it anyways. But last night I picked it back up and have done however many inches this is. And I like it. I like how it swirls around. Both this and the swirly socks from Prairie Girl Susie um, kind of inspired me that the hat that I'm working on for Emma that I'm designing, um, I really like the spiral thing. And so I'm incorporating that into the top of her hat. But this is for Isaiah. <clears throat> and this yarn is orange, which is his favorite color. It's kind of a reddish orange, but it's the one he liked. It's the one my husband picked and thought he would be the best in. So that is a work in progress. I'm really light on the work in progress for this week. It's kind of sad. Okay, so the other thing that I have is my stole that I'm designing <clears throat> for my husband. Um... Normally for Linton practice, I either try to give something up or do some kind of discipline. Uh, usually it's like I will pray every day or I will not drink pop. I'm not good at keeping those ever. <sighs> yeah. And so the Linton practices are supposed to be. I guess reminiscent of the 40 days in the wilderness that Jesus endured. And so that's why you give something up or whatever, but it's to help you focus on the spiritual side of things. The point is not to just deprive yourself, but for it to have a point, which is what I normally try to do. Like a purposeful prayer life is something that I struggle with a lot of times. And so that's why in the past I've used that. But truthfully, I never make it through Lent doing anything. So this year, I got smart. This is a project that I don't really want to do, but my husband asked me for it. And I think it will be cool-ish. Um, but I also can say that it is a Lenten discipline because it is something that's kind of religious, but it's knitting which is why you're hearing about it. Anyways, so he wanted a stole, like a, the big, I don't know, whatever, the huge scarves that priests or preachers or reverends or pastors wear. And so we went through a whole bunch of questions. He went through um, some of my stitch dictionaries to try to figure out what he wanted on it. He decided he wanted the Presbyterian emblem which I think I've shown in the past. This is what the Presbyterian emblem is supposed to look like. <coughs> um, so I got on this place called printablepaper.net and it'll print you out like knitting graph paper. If you can see that, knit stitches are not squares. They're not really as 
flat and wide as this makes them out to be, but it was closer than the square ones I was making. So I turned this into this. I also used, I can't remember the name of it now. Um, I think it's linked in one of the other episodes, but it's this thing online that you can use for free. It's Stitch. I want to say Stitch Mastery, but that's not it because that's the um, charting software. But it will take an image, which I had of this, put it in there. You say how wide you want it, and it'll give you a grid that has your stitches on it. And then I took that and then adjusted it so that it was... Um, even on both sides and balanced and yada, yada, yada. So my Linton discipline for this year is to work for 15 minutes each day on my husband's stole. And yesterday I did not do it, but on Saturday I worked for more than two hours on this dumb thing. So it counts. So I started out with a seed stitch point. Here is the emblem. Um, I'm not super happy with it. I think any Presbyterian who happens to see this stole and or this episode will know exactly what this is. Um, I think that it's clear enough that you can get the symb the symbolism, you know, there's the cup and the book and the dove and the fish and all that kind of stuff. Like you can see it. Um, but I did not feel that it came out as smooth as it could on the fire. That actually works in my advantage because I think it looks very fiery. Like I do kind of like the fire. Um, but the cross, I felt needed to the stitches are a little bit funky anyways Mike is happy with it and he says he's gonna wear it all the time and I think when he's up on stage and everybody else is in the pews I sit in the front row so I'm the one that's gonna have to stare at it nobody behind me is gonna be able to tell that it's not the best color work in the world I sort of did it in Tarja sort of didn't because I didn't know how and it wasn't really working out the greatest, but it's kind of a hybrid of that. And then he wanted cable, which I had kind of steam blocked this bottom part, but the cable I have not. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So it's kind of a three, wo like three woven pieces. I loosened it up. I used fours through for all of this. And then for the cable, I went up to fives. I also spread out the crossings because I had shown this quite a long time ago, probably my very first podcast. I don't even remember now. See, the little swatch that I had made of the cable that he wanted, it just looked too tight. Like, it just looks like a mess. So this is not my favorite cable because even... That it was crossing that many stitches every fifth row or something like that. And I thought that was too often. So these are on like the seventh or eighth row. And in some places they kind of look like they're too far from each other. Because it's not really looking like this is a piece. It's, I don't know. I don't think it's going to matter once it's blocked and it's on him and... I can show how disciplined I am as a pastor's wife. Totally not true. But that is what I am working on. And it's, <clears throat> this is uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Sport in white, red. And I believe the blue is called like Midnight or something. I can't remember exactly. Um, I will say that I do not like this yarn. I washed it. Um, because the background is white. I, this is blowing out so bad with that stupid lamp on because it's the white background with this intense blue and especially the red. 
the red, I washed and washed and washed. It kept giving me colors in the water. Um, and so I finally was just like, well, whatever. I'm just gonna call it good, hung it up to dry, and then got busy on it. Uh, I did weigh my skeins, both because I was going to split them into balls so that I could have more than one. I have extra, actually. The yarn is scratchy as well is another reason I don't like it. But when I weighed it before splitting it into two balls, both the red and the blue were two ounces or two grams light. They were both 48 grams and they're supposed to be 50. And that's probably the one of the first times I've ever gotten a skein of yarn from anywhere that was actually light. And that really annoyed me because it's commercial yarn and that's crap. So normally I like a lot of the Knit Picks yarns that I try to use. Um, they're an economical ish or why can't I talk? They are an economical alternative for most things. This yarn I'm not happy with, but it is super scratchy, which I expected because a lot of the re uh, reviews said that, but this will not actually be touching his skin in any way. Either he will be wearing a robe or a collared shirt with a suit coat, and so it's just going to be on the outside and who cares. But anyways, not happy with the yarn. Doesn't really matter, but did get cheated out of several grams. I haven't weighed all the other ones, but I know both the red and the blue were light. Uh, okay, so that is all my whips. Both of my legs are now asleep. That's lovely. Okay, I'm going to pause and wake my feet up so that I'm not making like growling faces while on the video. Just realized that I forgot to mention uh, where my whips are living. This is my poinsettia bag. This is also from the Knits Best Thing. Dawn from the Codependent Knitters is the owner of that shop. And I love this. It's so perfect and wintry. And then my swirly socks are living in my winter church bag. Sorry, I can't see. <laughs> Uh, and this is from Beach Dreams Bags. She is SL Sliders on Instagram. And I was just going to mention that whenever, um, if you find something on a podcast, you go and buy a pattern or yarn or bags. And I'm not just saying this for my podcast, but really any podcast. If you go and buy something because you saw it on a podcast, mention that to whoever you are buying from. I think... For people who have not been around for very long, it does kind of help to get the word out, but also it could possibly lead to opportunities for giveaways for you because then the wor the people may be like, this person is using a lot of my materials. They are advertising for me basically because they love it and have given it out or shown it to people and things like that. And it just, it helps the whole community personally, I think. So that would be just a suggestion that I would have. Um, if you do ever decide to use something that I have raved about or anybody else for that matter. <clears throat> All right. And speaking of raving, <clears throat> in my M Mrs. Brown's bags, I have my acquisitions. Mind you, it's been a while and two of these were actually almost here the last time that I podcasted and didn't show like they showed up the next day maybe even by the time it was up actually uploaded but anyways we are just going to go through this this section is mostly yarn porn but there are a couple of acquis acquisitions that are not yarn so my row one um, like club mailer thing came and this month it is Mrs. Crop's, Cr 
Crosby loves to play. Train case is 55 Superwash Merino, 15 Nylon, and 30 Outlast Viscose. And comes uh, 425 yards to 100 grams. The Outlast Viscose is a rayon fiber technology that continuously acts with the body's microclimate to moderate temperature from being too hot or too cold. And I had to read you that because whenever this came, I absolutely knew that this was not just like wool. You can tell by looking at it. So there are lots of adorable colors in this. And it's kind of got that shiny look from the, well, that one is just, thanks, it's the ruler. It has that shiny look from the viscose where it almost looks kind of silky. But those are really cute, um, and because there's 10 of them, then they're a little bit bigger skeins than they sometimes are. And the Dingle Dop that came for February was, of course, I can't see it. Love, can you see it in there? So that was the Row One um, Yarn Club that comes every month. And then my Hedgehog Sock Club came. So, <clears throat> I do have a question. If ever anybody has ever gotten the Hedgehog Sock Clubs and Single Clubs, I'm wondering if the Sock Clubs and the Single Club are two different colorways, or if it's just that you get the same colorway, but it's on a different base. Anybody knows that? If you could let me know in the comments below, I would really appreciate that. Or on the show notes for this week's episode on Ravelry. So the first one is this, it's called Angel Dust. It is pink and blue and purple, and it has some orange speckles. It is crazy. It has like all the colors. I'm really getting annoyed that there's that shadow on that side of the uh, phone there. But that is the first color. And then the second color, <laughs> I don't like yellow. Um, it is never a color that you will ever see me at a yarn store pick up. Yellow is only in here because it's a complete rainbow. When I considered making it only five, the yellow was the one that was going bye-bye. Um, and so this other color is called Gold Mine, and it is definitely not my thing. It is not awful, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, I would not pick this up at a yarn store because there is quite a bit of yellow. It's maybe that is maybe a little bit better on the collar when it's actually in the shadow. It is a gold. Um, there are blue flecks in it. There are kind of rusty ones. There's obviously black. And there's like some darker grays and stuff. Like there's like a lot of depth in this. So I'm not really sure what to do with this one. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't know what I would possibly do with it. And so that's kind of my issue with what do I do with this? Um, because I don't think yellow looks great on me. Uh, but it's a little bit different. If I do something with it, it'll be like, I'll be pretty proud of myself for taking that challenge and doing something that is not a color I would normally pick. But I'm still happy with my sock club. So let me pause because it sounds like people just got home from school. Okay, let's continue on. The next thing that arrived was my first Suburban Stitcher yarn. I was watching the podcast one day and she was talking about her Get Suburban um, knit along and my husband asked if I had any yarn from her. I said no, and then I got a delivery. So 
I got these three colors. They are 2AM Kisses. and Grape Expectations. These are both on her singles base. And then on a sparkle, a glitter sock, I have Blonde Squad. And I am really excited to figure out what to do. I feel like these two need to go together in something that requires two. Um, it does have the 2am kisses has flecks of stuff that looks like it matches this grape expectation so I feel like they would be gorgeous together but I don't know what yet. And then the blonde squad I'm not sure if it will be socks or go into a different kind of project but it has all of my favorite colors in it and I love the story behind this. About her blonde squad. Um, my cats have been obsessed with this yarn. When it was sitting on my couch, anytime that they could get anywhere near it, they were constantly trying to get into the bag of it. And it smells really delicious. I can only smell it when I put it right up to my nose like I'm sniffing flowers. Um, I can't smell it like even when it's down here. So it's not overwhelmingly smelly, but it does smell delicious when it's up here. And so I don't know if the cats are just more sensitive and could smell that, but they really, really wanted this yarn. So that's my first Suburban Stitcher, and I'm looking forward to see what it grows up to be. Uh, then I went to my local yarn shop, which is Imagine It in Omaha. And I was looking for some sort of yarn that would be like that um, Lion Brand Amazing. I wanted something, like I didn't care if it had some acrylic in it, but I wanted something that was, that had wool. I didn't want all acrylic. And I really liked the fuzziness of it. Um, she did have one skein of this, Classic Shades Metallic from Universal, right? Yeah, from Universal Yarns. And it is sparkly and it is kind of similar this is 69% acrylic 29% wool 2% glitter you can see the glitter in there um, and so I am gonna make another pair of these but the other colors that she had in this were not like ones that I was like mm, yeah I like that so I did not get any more, but this might be an alternative that I will use um, and maybe order some if I decide that I want to make a bunch of samples or as gifts for people. <sighs> but there was that. And then I got some non-fuzzy yarn. This is, I don't know if it's Jojo Land or Ho Ho Land because Hohi makes me think it would be Ho Ho Land, but I think it might be Jojo Land. Anyway, it's rhythm, it's super washed, it's 100% wool, and it has kind of a gradient. So you can see that, you know, like this part of the yarn is gonna be different than this part. It has blues and purples in it. I got this color, which is called Aquarius. And I got two balls of that because it's 50. That, um, this is 100. So that's enough for a pair of, of the yoga socks. And then I also got this pink and purple one that will also be a gradient. And I kind of felt like even though it wasn't the, like, rainbow stripey like the Amazing Yarn was, that this gradient would um, be attractive in kind of that slouchy yoga sock. So... I'm going to be making some of these for my friend and yoga instructor, and she's going to let me measure her feet like a total creep, um, so that I can make different sizes, because we have different size of calves and feet, so she's helping me out, so I'm going to make her some of those. And then, <clears throat> right after that, I was tagged in a post for a giveaway, and, you know, I went and did it, and then realized that the lady's like location said she was from Lincoln, which
which is 45 minutes from here. And I was extremely excited. The only other local dyer that I know of is Prairie Girl Danny, and she's in Omaha. And so I was thrilled to see that there was one in Lincoln. She's the first one that I know of down there. And so I checked her out, uh, started getting her newsletter, and got some yarn from her. So she is Lofty Loops Yarn, and she does have a few skeins left on Etsy, but is moving into her own uh, website. So that is LoftyLoopsYarn.com. I'm not sure how well this is able to be seen, but... Um, there's a few things on the Etsy site, but all of her updates are going on to LoftyLoopsYarn.com, which is her personal website. Uh, so I got two from her, also in single, and I have Plumtastic and Mermaid Lagoon. And these are another two that seem to go together and are just absolutely gorgeous, and I love them. This has all these purplies, blues, and this is just all the different kinds of purple. I love them. I love them together. I think they go well because of those speckles. So I'm excited to figure out what to use these for as well. Since I got this yarn, and it got to me super quick, um, the tracking didn't even keep up with it. I think I ordered on a Sunday and it was here on Tuesday, which of course it's very close, but it also went to Omaha and then came to me. So I was kind of shocked that it showed up that quick. Since I ordered these and talked to her a bit, um, she has started a podcast. So that is something to look for. She has two episodes up and she talks about her yarn and what she's working on. Uh, she reminds me of one of my friends too. So that's kind of fun. Uh, but it is Lofty Loops on YouTube. But there is some gorgeous yarn by her. And I was super, super excited to find her. Very, very excited. That is all of my yarny acquisitions. So the yarn porn section has ended. But I also got a couple of other things. I found the Barbara Walker first treasury of knitting patterns on Amazon for a decent price one day. So I went ahead and got that. <clears throat> it is quite a bit different than the stitch dictionaries you get now, I feel like. I haven't looked at it a ton because I've been busy, as you notice from my <clears throat> finished objects pile and also when I get to life in the manse. But it's a lot more <laughs> There's a lot more words <laughs> in this um, than there are in the newer ones. There's not charts um, in this. But the Barbara Walker treasuries are something that a lot of people suggest you have. And I just wanted to check it out. It was a good price. And I feel like you can always use new stuff. And I also feel like if everybody is using the same stitch dictionary, there's only so many things you can do with one stitch. So I kind of like having something that's kind of older and not just the brand new stuff that's come out. So I have that now. And I'm happy. And then I also got on um, Fire Mountain. Is it Fire Mountain Beads or Gems? I can't remember. I think it's FireMountainBeads.com. But it might be Fire Mountain or Fire Mountain Gems. I can't remember. But I got these um, six odd seed beads. They are clear with silver. <clears throat> um, inside, these are for my Dancing with Cranes. Um, I believe it's called a stole scarf shawl thing. <clears throat> uh, Munchkin Mama on Ravelry has notes on adding beads to that. And so that's my plan with the Neon Unicorn Dye Studio <clears throat> that I am planning on using for that. I thought the yarn was right behind me, but I don't know where it is. Oh, it's up there on the piano where it doesn't belong. But anyway, so those came. And I probably will not do that shawl for the Rainbow Along. 
uh, for the Suburban Stitcher Rainbow Alarm because it only lasts until the 28th of February. And it's a shawl, it's beaded, it's lace. And so I don't know that I would really finish it. So I mean, I have the beads for it, but it's not like my highest priority right now. Uh, I am stocking a few patterns right now. I Stocking is maybe not the right word for it because I actually have all of them. But Prairie Girl Susie just came out with her internet internet cowl. <clears throat> and it has an interesting construction and has an opening that is buttoned so that you can have it down lower. It kind of goes over your shoulders or you can button it up and it makes it taller so you can really use it for a lot of warmth. And I am trying to decide what I want to make that out of. I also joined the Knit with the Stars um, sock club. That's from Laura Beth Knits on Instagram. And basically she's coming out with a sock pattern for each zodiac sign. So Pisces just came out. Um, and it's not like it, the sock is a picture of the constellation but it is you know Pisces is kind of a watery type thing and so the um, sock kind of has a watery type theme like it looks kind of like lacy waves so I thought that that would be fun and interesting uh, I believe that's on sale for $15 for the whole collection so it's barely um, above a dollar a pattern <clears throat> I apologize I'm starting to lose my voice and so I decided to jump in on that and we'll be doing that. So hopefully those socks might get on the needles as soon as my um, swirly socks get finished up here quick, hopefully. Um, and then I'm looking at doing a resistance hat. It is um, sort of along the same lines that the Netmore Girls uh, did uh, Jasmine from the Knit or Girls. I have the yarn for it. I have the pattern. There are a couple of the sayings that I want to change um, or maybe update compared to when it came out. There's some of the things that I think I want to change. So that's something I'm looking at and kind of thinking about. <clears throat> you know, the science, the science stripe has a DNA panel um, that from my understanding was kind of hard to follow on the color work just because it's kind of a random helix shape because it's DNA but it's not like a word where you know there should be something there so you're looking at your chart more. Uh, I felt like something like science is real or <clears throat> even like practice stewardship or something the Presbyterian but Confessions says that as Christians we should practice stewardship of the earth and its resources and so I was thinking also of doing something with stewardship um, because that ties into my life and then actually a few people from Canada changed um, there's a little saying in one of the stripes from the Statue of Liberty that's um, give me your poor, your weary, or something like that. And they actually put diversity as our strength because they're Canadian and that's kind of more Canadian and less uh, United States themed. And I um, kind of like the idea of diversity being a strength. I do think that that is true and might actually go with something like that instead of the... Um, Statue of Liberty saying, but we'll see. So those are kind of the things that I have coming up that I'm looking at. And then I have a lovely little section. I watch the Faking Sanity podcast, and they are two ladies in Canada. I want to say Sarnia, but I feel like that's not right. That's where codependent knitters are from. There's so many towns in Canada, who would think, because the country's, like, so small. Um, but I forget where everybody's from. The Cozy Up Stitches or Grand Prairie, but there's all these different places. Anyway, maybe it's Dawson's Creek. Dawson Creek, because Dawson's Creek is the show. Anyways, that is not the point. I am not teaching you geology. 
geography. See, I can't even talk. Anyways, they own a little yarn shop and uh, bookshop. So they always have this section about the culture that they've consumed and they read all these books and watch intelligent movies. And so I find it fascinating that people have time for these other pastimes. There's a few other podcasts that also talk about books. Um, the Knit Girls talk about books. Two Knit Lip Chicks talk about books. And so um, I was what I found a new podcast called Feather Stitches. And they also watch the Faking Sanity podcast. And so they were kind of talking about um, a lot of times when people go into like their culture consume, they're like, okay, if you're only here for the knitting, bye bye. Um, <clears throat> And like, maybe we should just like not do this section or whatever. And the feather stitches were like, yeah, do this section. You know, we like to hear about it. And then they kind of like talked about what their culture consumed was. And so I decided to include the culture consumed uh, section in my podcast because I'm not cultured. <laughs> and I thought it was kind of funny. I find it funny that all these people have so much time for reading and watching like intelligent films and my culture is knitting podcasts and Netflix. So anyways, I'm going to talk about what I have done for my Netflix and knit. Um, <clears throat> YouTube podcasts. There is, of course, Baking Sanity, which I just mentioned. Feather Stitches are two sister-in-laws. They are a newer podcast. They just started about the same time that I did. And they also do quilting, which is um, interesting and fun. And they are a really good one. I really like them. Uh, the Codependent Knitters I've mentioned, and um, I'm really enjoying them. Dawn is the sponsor of our 50 uh, subscriber giveaway. Uh, the Knit Girls, they've been around for a really long time, um, but I also enjoy them. You'll kind of notice that I have a tendency to like podcasts that have more than one person in them. I do like the interaction, but um, I don't have anybody in a podcast with me all the time, so I don't have like a friend or a sister, sister-in-law, so you just get me. Uh, the Knitting Expat, I have actually um, not only been watching the new ones, but I kind of went back uh, and have been watching her old ones. Um, I was interested to see how it came about that she moved to the United States because, you know, in the original, she was in Bahrain and then she lived in New York. And then I was kind of interested in like, at what point did she say on her podcast that she was having her baby? And so like, I'm up to like February of last year, like she's getting ready to have her baby. And so at this point, I'm just going to keep going and just finish and watch everything I haven't ever seen. Um, the Yarn Barfs are from Ohio and they are a couple of ladies that are friends and I enjoy them. I, the Amanda talks a lot to me on Instagram and so I feel like I've kind of like made a friendship with her. Um, the first time I watched them I was not like a huge fan but it was because it kind of weirded me out because she talks just like my mother-in-law. Like the words she says and her voice and the way she, like the, the word usage, there's just some words that she uses that are just like my mother-in-law. So it was freaking me out because I felt like there was like Skype going on and I was, anyways. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but I really enjoy them. <clears throat> Yarn Hoarder is one that's pretty popular that um, I'm kind of new to. I really want to do her dish um, cloth challenge, as you can see right here above my head. I have plenty of cotton, um, but I have really just been too busy knitting everything else to jump in on her dish cloth challenge. I still plan to, and I would really love to have the 52 by the end of the year. Um, but I did get a friend to join her um, dish, dish cloth challenge. I've also considered that now that I've taught um, Emma and Mike to knit, that maybe I should put them on washcloth duty and 
I can count is my 52 washcloths. Like, you need to do a lot of washcloths so you can, like, be sure you know how to knit. Um, hey, sister, of course, they finally had a new one um, after Rachel had her baby. Tabby, of course, is getting ready to have her baby, so I'm not sure how many episodes are going to be coming up in the near future, but I did catch their last one, and they are really sweet and fun to watch. They have some amazing sewing projects. Um, I did get out the sewing machine yesterday, and I had this huge sweatshirt that was like a 2X men's, and my husband is six foot seven. And so if it's not a tall, it doesn't really fit him anyways. So this sweater has been mine, and it has a huge makeup stain from when one of my, I think my almost eight-year-old was a toddler, and like squirted the foundation out on everything in the house. Like, I don't even know how there was enough foundation in a tube for him to squirt it in as many places as he did. But there are sheets, and there are this sweatshirt, like, there's tons of things that he got foundation all over when he was a toddler. So I wear it inside out and it's got like, you know, it's kind of a light gray. So it's got that fuzzy. Anyways, I like it that way. Um, but I decided to like revamp it, took out the neckline and sewed up the sides and the sleeves. Like I ended up taking like this much off the sleeves uh, because they were just so far out from my armpit. It looks way cuter now. Um, but that was my sewing project. That's the first time I've had my sewing machine out in, um, since Halloween. I did a little bit for the kids' costumes. Um, and it made me think of them because I'm like, this is so not as good as them. Um, but it's not about comparison. They have amazing production value on their, uh, podcast. And I love watching them, but that's just not something that is a reality for my life at all. But they are a good one to watch. Um, Brooklyn Knit Folk had a podcast. I enjoy watching her. It's interesting. She likes to share, share a lot of things about New York and that I find fascinating. I've always lived in the Midwest. Well, actually, that's a lie. I lived in Arizona for a couple of months. And that's not the Midwest. Um, and so, like, being somewhere where you don't use a car fascinates me. We could never live there because I don't know how we could grocery shop. We could not physically carry all of the food that we would need to buy at a grocery store back to our apartment or house or whatever if we lived in a city like that that you did not have a vehicle. But anyways, um, I also want to make her Clark socks. I haven't got around to it yet, but I'm planning to. There is, of course, the Suburban Stitcher podcast. She is very sweet. And I'm doing all the rainbows for her knit along. Cozy Up with the Stitch and Sisters um, is probably one of my favorites right now. Um, I just love them. This last week, it was just Jamie and Christina, who's the sister who's not normally on the podcast. And it was just fun and refreshing. I just love them. I always wait. They are pretty regular um, on their podcasting on Thursdays and so you you know Thursday night or Friday morning I can pretty much count on that and it makes my week feel so much better when I'm like yes it's coming out today. I mentioned that Lofty Loops has now uh, come out with a podcast since I bought yarn from her not because I bought yarn from her but uh that was fun to watch um she accidentally erased her first one and I was like well my first podcast, I recorded for 45 minutes and then realized that I had actually turned the camera off when I thought I was turning it on. So I had like me getting ready and then nothing. And I had gone through almost the entire podcast before I realized that the numbers weren't moving at the top, which is something I now watch for. Um, but I think it's fun to see people from the beginning and to... Yeah, it's just fun. Um, I've also watched Bakery Bears and Honey Bee in the last little bit. Both of those are pretty popular, so you probably already know about them. And the other new thing that has come out recently is Hohi has a journal. Um, and I find that fascinating. It's kind of fun to listen to her. Um, because her patterns are in English, I don't really think of the fact that she's not a native English-speaking person. 
And so she has an accent and it's very beautiful to listen to. And she also brings a lot of um, the designing aspects and she's a very popular designer. So it's interesting to see what she has to say about those things. Uh, I think she just this week put out the third one of that. So that's something to check out if you haven't seen it. Um, as far as the audio podcast, um, I've been home a lot or not really listening to stuff in the van. And so the only ones that I've really listened to are the Prairie Girls and the Knitmore Girls recently, since this last little bit. And then for my net actual Netflix that we finally got to, we recently finished The Office. I'm very highbrow over here. Um, we did finally finish Stranger Things. That was one that we would only watch during nap time. I don't like scary stuff, and it was not one that I wanted to watch right before bed. Plus, you kind of want to keep going and see what happens, and that just keeps you up all night. Um, we also went through all of Psych after we finished The Office. Uh, that's one of our favorite shows, and... I'm very, very sad that they don't do it anymore. And then the only other thing that I've watched is Downton Abbey. I've never watched it before. And so I'm through to when the eldest sister marries the heir. That was the last episode I saw. But I haven't been able to watch it in like a week or two now. Um, just, I don't know why. Other culture that I've consumed includes... Um, Things that mostly I did not consume by choice. There's PJ Mask. There is Bow on the Go. Miraculous Ladybug. That's most of it. Yeah, our three-year-old is absolutely obsessed with PJ Mask. And that alternates with Bow on the Go. I do not like that show. Better than Caillou. Anything's better than Caillou. <clears throat> Um, and also, since I've gone through, so that's all my culture, because I'm super cultured. My husband's like, you need to say that you watch the Olympics. So, for two hours, on a Friday night, I watched the opening ceremonies, and that's like the only, like, real culture that I've consumed in the past month. Uh, since I have gone back and have been watching all the, like, past Knitting Expat, um, videos... She was, I don't know if she still does it, I can't think if she does, but she kind of, um, in the middle where I am now, went through and each month was kind of sharing her stats of what she had done. And not that I would compare myself to her, because I absolutely wouldn't, she knits like the wind. Um, I thought it would be interesting, especially to be able to look back and see what I've done. Um, but for January, I completed two shawls, they were my dad's shawl and my sister's shawl. And the boot socks, which were the rest fiber from the Wanderlust collection from Knitting Expat, but I made them like their boot socks. And at the end of the month, I had five active whips. I forgot to mention that I have worked on my long line cardigan that I've showed previously, but I've just like gotten down to the armpit on the front and the back. And so it barely looks any different, so I didn't show that. Um, I did, however, purge 144 skeins of yarn that I knew I was not going to use anytime soon or ever, and decided to purge 39 whips. The ones that people mentioned that I should finish or that people commented on, I did not purge. My mom, I asked my Um, I did ask my mom if she wanted the stocking that I had made but not finished, and she said yes, and so I kept that. Um, and there's a few other things that I'm going to look into finishing, um, or doing other things with. So, but there were 39 that went bye-bye, and that did include 156 little tiny crocheted squares that I don't ever want to touch. 
that is all of my knitting content. I was going to share a little bit about what's going on in life in the manse. Um, right after I podcast the last time, my husband was moderating a congregational meeting for another church, and a lady was giving a report from a pulpit that was, you know, like it's up on stairs, and then like there's stairs below it, and then it's even higher up. So she's like really high up in the air, and she starts acting weird. And, like, people start yelling at him. And so he runs across the stage and catches her as she passes out during this meeting and falls out of the pulpit. So he's been going around saying that he saved someone's life. Um, Violet popped a ton of teeth all at once. Uh, she got the two top ones in the middle, and then she got the two side ones in the middle, like, just a few days later. She still doesn't have the ones on the bottom, which is strange because it usually alternates. Um with bottom being first for each set. Um, that caused us some feeding problems. When I made these notes, it was causing feeding problems. Um, we are no longer breastfeeding due to some, like, chainsaw massacre breastfeeding sessions. So, she was not biting me, but it was rubbing skin off. And I tried changing her latch and her position and everything and it was not working and so we are done um we have been practicing sabbath this year so on friday nights um is when we decided to try to do that and so a couple weeks ago we did it and i decided that the kids are old enough to finally learn how to play monopoly which was one of my favorite kids games as a kid and then the kids became obsessed with it. It takes forever because it takes them a while to count money and stuff like that. But that was a ton of fun. Um, that's been going okay. At first, the first time, it was great. We were totally plan had it all planned out. We were ready for it. You know, supper was for sure figured out in the crock pot. And really just, um, we had an action plan for what we were going to do during the time that we were not touching electronics of any type or watching TV or anything like that. Um, and then there's been a few of them that have not gone very smoothly because we weren't prepared ahead of time. Um, it does take preparation to stop. That's what it seems like. So, um, and then the kids didn't have school on Friday and we completely forgot that it was Friday and totally missed Sabbath. Um, and then of course, the week before that, as our Sabbath activity, we were watching the Olympics um, opening ceremonies. Um, so that's kind of an ongoing practice. Emma, a couple weeks ago, was um, in her first honor choir. And so we traveled to go see her be in that. And then the next week after that was her 10th birthday. Um, she got her own room. We had a spare bedroom uh, that was basically collecting everything still had boxes in it from when we moved in two and a half years ago so we cleaned that entire room out and set it up for her she now has harry potter stickers all over the wall has her own room her own closet first time in her life well not in her life but since her brother was born two years after she was <clears throat> so first time she's had her only own 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 room since then uh, she's pretty excited about that and so far she's keeping it clean so we'll see how that goes um, <clears throat> our church did a bunch of, pa well, they hired someone to do a bunch of painting on the inside, and that included the food pantry that we run. Um, so the whole pantry was, like, cleaned out, and then it took longer than it was supposed to, and we've had a lot of snow and ice and cold, and so the pantry's been closed several times, and it's just been kind of crazy with that. We finally, um, got it put back together, and got everything moved and it's much more organized and everything is up front where everybody can find it and you don't have to be running back and forth to stock and so that's actually going better now. We have, we spent Saturday at Presbytery which is our regional um, governing board of the Presbyterian Church so it's basically from central Nebraska to the Missouri River minus a scoop around Omaha. Omaha is in their own um, from the South Dakota border to the Kansas border. And so we went to Lincoln for that and um, 
Presbyterian meetings aren't super fun, but it is adult time. And I do, you know, you know, I've built relationships with some people since we've moved here. And so, you know, that's the only time we really see them is at Presbyterian meetings. So that's nice. Um, and then my husband and I signed on to be the registrars for the tri the youth triennium. So every three years, the Presbyterian Church has this huge youth convention at Purdue University in Indiana, and um, I'm the registrar for that, for the one that will be happening in July of 19. So that'll be interesting. Um, I did go to the last one in July of 16. That was the first time I'd ever went because I was not raised Presbyterian. I was actually Baptist. And um, that was a very influential experience on my life. It changed my perspective on a lot of stuff. It really recharged me. Um, it was a horrible experience. Like the dorms didn't have air conditioning. The showers looked like they were from the seventies and barely worked. And we rode on a bus for 14 hours and, you know, sleeping in a dorm bed with no air conditioning and running around. And I put on like 24,000 steps every day because you walked everywhere. Like that part of it was not good and not fun. But I do want to go back again, and um, we really want it to be a good experience for the youth of our presbytery, and we thought that we could do the best job. <laughs> so we have signed on to do that. Um, it will be interesting because that's a week that we will be away from the kids. But this time, Mike is going with me, and I last time struggled um, and was really upset that first day. First of all, because I got no sleep on the bus whatsoever. <clears throat> but also just like being that far away from the kids and Mike was very stressful for me because that doesn't normally ever happen. Um, and so I think having him with me will help with that part. Um, Violet will be two by then and Emma will be 12. No, no, she'll only be 11. Whatever. Um, that's a ways off, but stuff has to start getting planned soon so that's what we're doing and yesterday we ended up with like four sick kids um, they seem to be kind of going through a cycle I think that before we didn't really have problems with kids getting sick I was always home with them and I think that we crossed that threshold having three of them in school where now we're getting sick a lot more um, this is probably the third time that we've gone through kind of a sickness um, this winter. And that's like more than we normally get in three years. So not super thrilled with that. It's not a very bad thing. Um, we've had three kids with fevers, one that puked, one that's only just had a really snotty nose. And then Emma's had nothing in this. So it's kind of the plague, but it doesn't. And seems like it's sort of super contagious because four of them were sick yesterday. We started out the day with two and then by the end of the day had four. Um, but Emma's fine and Mike and I are fine. So hopefully that will go through. And just because of all of that and naps and errands and just everything has made my podcasting schedule just really whacked. Um, and so, like I said earlier, I'm going to try starting next week to do Wednesday podcasts and see how that goes. And then we may have to adjust it around, but I really am trying to get it to be weekly like it was in the very, very beginning. Um, it's just easier. It's easier to keep track of, but also I feel like the momentum needs to be there. So we'll see how that goes. Um, mostly other than that, I'm just working on lots of knitting. You know, this completely overtook me when I was working on it, um, but purging my house and working on our family routine to make sure that the housework is under control, it's pretty much what I've been doing, changing diapers. Our three-year-old is potty trained when he's naked, <clears throat> but you put anything on that kid and he's no longer potty trained, um, diaper, underwear, training pants anything at all, he'll go to the bathroom in it. If he's naked, 
he goes and uses the bathroom by himself. So maybe moving to a nudist colony. So perhaps it will be Mama in the nudist colony. Um, but really nobody wants to see that. His little butt is super cute, but nobody wants to see the rest of us, mostly the adults. But hopefully that will start getting better soon. I hope. I don't really know what to do at this point. Since he doesn't seem to get at all that you don't do it in your pants, but have complete control over it all the rest of the time. But at least he has stopped peeing in other things. Peeing and moving. In his dump trucks and bottles and vacuum cleaner, like, crevice tools and all that fun stuff. My life is fascinating. Anyways, I think that's about it for now, and I'm going to let you go so I can get this put together and see you on the flip side. So enjoy your yarn this week. Um, check out some of those podcasts that I mentioned. All of them are very good and worth the time that you would spend with them. Um, and I will see you next week. Bye.